And the second track is The World Would Run Better. That's one I wrote, Danny. Um, I can't remember when I wrote this, actually. I think it went through a couple iterations. I do remember what inspired it. It was some some long conversation which at the time you know i loved you know because i like talking shit and it was over coffee and we pretty much solved the world's problems just in that conversation in in total comfort and then the next day or the next week i thought about it and then it kind of viscerally struck me as to how ridiculous that was to uh emotionally equate <laughs> talking with actually solving something so that's what the song is about and then as usual we try to layer it so that if you just listen to it on surface on a, as a surface uh listening you'll you'll get some sort of pseudo inspirational thing but then if you delve in you'll be depressed <laughs> <laughs> but also the, the lyric about uh argentina being to move it closer to the house originally was Australia. It was Australia, but Australia just wasn't... I think Jesse said... It's not romantic. Yeah, it's enough. not... You know, we need something romantic. And then, luckily, we had been to Argentina and found it very romantic and, like, <laughs> perfect. So we were just like, yeah, Argentina... It would be nice if Argentina was closer. <laughs> I, th- I think... I think it's got this audacity to the lyric, you know, like... Yeah, let's just drink a cup of coffee and we'll fucking figure it out. Why don't people understand what how to fix right. the world? Yeah, you know, like you, I mean, it's clear to me. It's and <laughs> I can't remember. Was Ross on? The, I think it was Ross. He, he said something along those lines. You know, like any time a conversation starts with, if everybody could just. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although, if you think about it, we were going back with the old podcast guest Christian talking about the Dutch, and you think about the first coffee shops, they did kind of probably have a couple of conversations over a cup of coffee that changed 500 years worth of history. I I really believe that there's a good book called uh, The Devil's Cup and I th- you know it coffee is one of the most important crops in human history, I think. And you know now it's become this kind of novel hipstery thing where they design it and you know it's just hard wooden benches and people choosing their outfit for the coffee shop, but it really th- was very important. I think the best lyric for me, as far as I'm concerned, is is uh, I think the ocean has too many waves. There's got to be a way to make it behave. And I think language is important when you're dealing with subtle concepts like this, where you say, use a word such as behave, which you would normally associate with childish. Like, you know, the ocean is just something that can be pedantically instructed. You know, <laughs> and I think that contradiction in the language is kind of what, what hit it for me when I heard it. I thought, okay, I get it. Um, you know, I'm on board with this song. Then getting the recording finished, I think was a, it was a little bit of a struggle for a while just because the demo was quite straightforward, sort of David Byrne pop almost. And uh, we wanted to find a way. Well, how would, if the band were playing this, how would we play it on stage? So the introduction of the accordion and some of the guitar riffs, you know, I, it's still quite poppy, I think, in a good way. But we, we added a little bit of bandiness to it, I think, in the recording. And it's even a little bit harder when we do it live, a little more energy. Mm-hmm. And that image for this song, that's your hand, right? You made it look like a baby hand? No, no, I just found a found a baby hand. Oh. <laughs> I thought you just really uh, squashed your hand down to make it look like a baby hand. No, I did move Argentina off the earth. It's Trump's right? hand. Yeah. 